my daughter got to the age where she wanted books read to her naturally those books end up all over my couch so i started designing a bookcase for her and i wanted something that is kid safe so i start with the box and i added legs this will just get my imagination started to allow me to make something i want the beauty of modeling is that you can copy and paste the design to make adjustments. So I'll send the image to friends and request some criticism. And I'll make a bunch of adjustments and then I'll finally settle on one design. And this actually didn't solve the problem of having books everywhere. We still have books everywhere and I'll need a larger bookshelf. I use SketchUp and it allows me to break apart my design. You can think of how you want to connect things quick iterations can be made. I mean, I made 10 versions of this bookcase before fabricating. Once I see all these parts kind of individually and just see like a lot of them were actually mostly rectangular, it becomes easier. So I'll generate this parts list. And this is actually something that I made after I built this. Um, I've since started doing this more because it just allows me to be more efficient. I'll use the Shaper Origin to fabricate some of the curved pieces, but I also use it to make my templates. And this is just an example of how I use it to make my stretchers. So this is how I cut it. I don't ever cut it all the way through because I'll finish it off with the jigsaw. And I'll finish cutting those with the uh, track saw, the track saw across. Those there. After the shaper does the precision first pass, I'll use a jigsaw to cut out the templates. In this case, it's just made from particle board cabinet doors. I'll clean up the template with the router and a pattern following bit so the edge is clean. This is 3 quarter inch particle board, but 3 8 inch or half inch thick is best for templates. I'll use whatever material I have laying around though. The outside curve radius of the door was easy to do on the router table because the door is small. The inside curve radius for the legs required the plunge router just because this part was very long. So it required a couple of passes. This is the part that sucks. I use a piece of steel. That's how I take off this adhesive. This kind of. That's rare, but it comes off that easily. This is the layout of the big, long outer shell. So I have the curve cuts laid out and you can see my template um, getting ready to route out the, the feet or the legs. And those are just the stretchers along with my doors. At first I used table saw to kind of make these joints, but since I was gonna use the track saw, I realized that my, my blade size is different and Actually, it makes a huge difference. So if you're gonna make these test joints, you can see I made a bunch. Um, if you get it right, you should definitely use the right saw that you're gonna use to make the cuts with, so. Another thing I learned when cutting with the track saw is right at this point where you get to the end, um, lift up the track saw and back cut in. It just helps to Prevent, prevent tear out and makes for a cleaner finish on the end. Here's some finished shots of how it looks like close. I sanded and pre-finished all the parts as much as possible before the major glue up. This is my process to assembly and I started with the stretchers, connected the stretchers to the shell. I dropped the shelf in at the bottom, installed the center divider then I fastened the back panel into the stretchers and then I simply put in the inset doors. Okay, so I guess I thought I better do a little tour of everything I have. I got all my shelf pin holes pre-drilled. Um, kind of dry fitted it a little bit, but not too much. Um, wood glue, little 5 8 screws. Got my wood glue, I mean, got my little drill gun, some corner clamps if you need them. These little cards are going to be used to um, kind of move some glue around in between the perks. And yeah, it's a 
This is scary. I hope I don't break this right now. To glue the kerf cut joints, I use Type Bond 2 and some playing cards to spread and apply the glue into all of the joints. Um, it's pretty messy and I use more glue than I needed to. Bending the plywood and getting it to fit into the upper stretchers is the most stressful part of this build. And once you get to this point, you're definitely nervous because you did a whole bunch of work and you just want it to look nice. Getting the upper stretchers to fit tightly to the outer shell was pretty difficult. I used a bunch of clamps and I didn't get it perfect. Even though this part is really stressful, I really enjoy it. You have to be focused and deliver it. And it's just super fun sometimes. Over here I'm mumbling about how stressed out it was. I didn't want to rely on the shell pins to hold the stretchers to the shell. So I'm going to be using dowels. And one of the ways I drill dowel holes is I like to use a spacer block rather than a blue tape flag. I think this is just more consistent. I use quarter inch walnut dowels to give it some contrast. And I don't think you want to go much larger than quarter inch for three quarter inch plywood. For the cabinet door hinges, I just used some regular full overlay hinges that I found probably in a cabinet that got thrown away. And it's not made for the inlay application that I have. So what I had to do was actually add three quarter inches of plywood into the cabinet to allow these hinges to work as a inset hinge. Um, I would advise if you can afford it, just buy the inset hinge cleats because it, it'll look a little bit better. Here's some finished shots of how it looks. I've since gotten rid of those shelves in the middle and made a few adjustments, um, like with the door pulls. Overall though, it's been a nice addition to have a little bit more free space from books everywhere. And she also has a nice place to draw. Please uh, like and subscribe if you like this video.